the prophets Jacob and Joseph, the stolen belt. Allah had sent the son of the prophet Isaac, Jacob, as the prophet of Philistine. The prophet Jacob had 12 sons. The youngest ones were Joseph and Benjamin. The prophet Jacob's nickname was Israel. For that reason, his sons were called Ben-e-Israel, which meant the sons of Israel. The generation known as the Israelis were born from Jacob's 12 sons. Joseph and Benjamin's mother was different from the mother of the other children. So Joseph and Benjamin were each other's actual brothers, while the others were their stepbrothers. Joseph and Benjamin's mother had passed away when they were very young, and for that reason, Joseph's aunt had raised them. Joseph's aunt used to love them very much. It wasn't possible for anyone not to love Joseph after seeing him. He was a very cute and likeable child. He filled the hearts of others with love and mercy. Joseph's aunt took very good care of him. She was afraid that his father might take him away from her when he got older. Eventually, the prophet Jacob wanted his son back. Joseph's aunt felt very sad. She tried to find ways to keep Joseph with her for at least another year. She came up with a plan. The prophet Jacob had a silver belt left to him from his grandfather, the prophet Abraham. Jacob had given this belt to Joseph's aunt to look up. According to the laws during the prophet Jacob's time, the punishment for stealing something was that the thief would remain with the person he stole from for a year and would become his servant. Joseph's aunt put the silver belt belonging to the prophet Jacob round Joseph's waist and made him wear something over it. She then sent Joseph outside to play with his friends. She then told everyone that the silver belt was lost and that someone might have stolen it. Everyone started looking for the belt. They finally found it on Joseph. In this situation, it appeared Joseph had stolen the belt that had belonged to his aunt. According to the laws of that time, he was to remain with his aunt for one more year. The prophet Jacob liked his sister's cleverly thought of plan. He realized that she had done something like this because she loved Joseph very much and wanted him to stay with her a little longer. So he decided not to say anything about Joseph staying with his aunt. Joseph's dream. The prophet Jacob watched out for and showed more care for Joseph and his brother Benjamin because they were motherless. Joseph was both handsome and a kind-hearted person. It was clear from his appearance that he had a bright future. This quality of Joseph had attracted his father's interest even more. However, the prophet Jacob's love for Joseph and Benjamin was bothering his other son. The prophet Jacob actually loved all of his sons and did his duty towards them without fail. He never treated them bad or hurt their feelings in any way. But he couldn't help himself from showing more love towards Joseph and Benjamin. This was something that was out of his control. Joseph's brothers envied him for that and they were jealous of their father's love and interest for Joseph and Benjamin. The prophet Jacob was aware of this. When Joseph was around 12 years old, he had a strange dream. When he woke up, he went up to his father and told him his dream. Dear father, I had a dream tonight. The sun, moon and 11 stars came up to me and bowed before me. The prophet Jacob thought about it for a while and realized that his thoughts weren't mistaken. Great Allah would give Joseph many blessings in this world and in the next and would spread his glory all over the universe. He slowly whispered to Joseph and said, Dear son, don't ever talk about your dream to your brothers. They will become even more jealous of you. They might even try to trick you and try to harm you because Satan is the most dangerous enemy of mankind. He might turn your brothers against you. Dear son, the dream you saw is a real dream. Allah will choose you from all his people and make you his prophet. He will also give you a great wealth and a kingdom and will teach you how to interpret dreams. The prophet Jacob had interpreted the 11 stars in the dream as his sons, the sun as himself and the moon as his wife. In that case, this revealed that Joseph would be in a higher place than them. Interpreting dreams had advanced very much in the prophet Jacob's tribe. 
Joseph's brothers knew about this science too. If they heard about Joseph's dream, then they would easily interpret it. They wouldn't be able to stand the fact that Joseph was superior to them. So for this reason, the prophet Jacob had asked Joseph not to tell his brothers about his dream. The Horrible Decision The prophet Jacob's sons were becoming more jealous towards Joseph and Benjamin each day. The fact that they were stepbrothers strengthened their feelings. Eventually, one day, they gathered and started discussing the matter between themselves. Their faces were strained from their anger. Their hands were shaking and they were making fists. One of them could stand it no longer and shouted, Our father loves Joseph and his brother more than us. Another nodded his head in agreement and said, We are the ones who do all the jobs for our father. We are stronger than them and there are more of us. We are more worthy of being loved than Joseph and his brother. The third brother said, But look at what our father does. Instead of loving us, he loves Joseph and Benjamin, who are not only younger, but can't do any work either. He prefers them to us. A fourth brother agreed by saying, Maybe our father is doing us a great injustice. This is obviously a big mistake. A fifth brother made another suggestion. What are we waiting for then? What is the use of talking? I think we have two solutions to this problem. We can either kill Joseph and bury him, or take him somewhere very far away and leave him there. He probably wouldn't be able to come back. Then our father will give all his love to us, whether he likes it or not. The idea sounded acceptable to the others. They felt they had no other choice in order to win back their father's love. But then one of them felt uncomfortable about doing such a thing and asked, but wouldn't we be committing a sin? The brother who had made the suggestion replied, after Joseph is out of the way, we can repent altogether. Allah is very merciful. We can be pure people once again as if we hadn't committed a sin. Yahuda, the eldest son of the prophet Jacob, was listening to the conversation from the beginning. He couldn't accept the plan to kill his brother and said, no, no, get this idea of killing Joseph out of your heads. Killing someone is a big crime and a big sin. If we do this murder willingly, Allah will never forgive us. The best thing to do is to throw Joseph into a deep well. Passers will find him and take him away. This idea seemed better and they agreed. They would throw him into a deep well and leave him. Give Joseph to us. The prophet Jacob could sense that his sons were plotting something against Joseph. So he was watching out for him even more now. He didn't let Joseph go anywhere out of his sight, even for a moment. So it was hard for the others to separate Joseph from their father. The ten brothers had talked and agreed among themselves and made a plan to get the prophet Joseph away from Jacob. They then went up to their father and asked, Dear father, why won't you leave Joseph alone for even a minute? He's our brother. Let him come with us so that he can play. The prophet Jacob replied, I will not let you come near him. I can't stand to be apart from him for even an hour. Leave him alone and let him stay with me. The brothers were determined to take Joseph away from their father and said, We are very sad to see you act like this father. What have we done to you or to Joseph for you not to trust us? Our poor brother lives here like he's in prison. He needs to laugh and play as well. We are going to the meadows tomorrow. Please let Joseph come with us. Let him play and have fun as he wishes. The prophet Jacob was put in a difficult situation by his sons. He couldn't say anything to them because they hadn't made their real intentions obvious. But then he didn't want to send Joseph with them either. All of a sudden, he remembered a dream he had some time ago. In his dream, a wolf was attacking Joseph. The prophet Jacob then told his sons about his dream and said, I'm afraid that while you are playing, you might forget about Joseph and maybe, just as I had seen in my dream, a wolf may attack him and eat him. So I think that it's best that Joseph remains here. The prophet Jacob's sons all objected to that and said, Oh father, how can a wolf come near such a big crowd? Don't worry about it. 
when have we let you down? Don't you think we would be able to protect him? The prophet Jacob couldn't argue any more and agreed to let them have Joseph. Okay, you can go, but be very careful. The ten brothers then left in excitement. They had got what they wanted. The prophet Jacob had actually given them a great opportunity by telling them his dream. He had given them the perfect excuse for carrying out their bad intentions. People should be very careful in such matters. You should never give clues or ideas to people with bad intentions. Our dear prophet Muhammad has said on this matter, do not give people anything which they can use against you. As you see, Jacob had given his sons an idea about the attack of a wolf when they had no such intention. He had said, I'm afraid that a wolf may attack Joseph. They then used that excuse and told their father that Joseph was eaten by a wolf. Joseph is thrown into a well. The prophet Jacob couldn't object to his son's wish and had no choice but to send Joseph with his brothers. The next day, they took Joseph and went outside the city. They had fun in the meadows, laughing and playing. They had gone far away from their house. When they arrived near the Kenan well, in which they planned to throw Joseph, their behaviour towards him changed all of a sudden. Their faces became angry and they started to curse Joseph with hate and jealousy. Joseph realised his brother's intentions and started to plead with them. He told them to be afraid of Allah because he was worried Allah would do something to them. Joseph's brothers dragged him over to the well. First, they took off his shirt and tied a rope around his waist. They then let him down into the well and all of a sudden Joseph found himself in a dark and wet place. He held on to the stones around the well and saved himself from drowning. He was anxious and wondered what would happen to him. How would he get out of there? At that moment, the angel Gabriel showed up. Gabriel brought a revelation to Joseph that would calm him down. Dear Joseph, don't worry. You will get out of here safely and will remind your brothers of this terrible thing they have done to you. However, they won't know it is you who will do this. Joseph had now calmed down after hearing the revelation. He was no longer afraid. He knew then that Allah would rescue him from there. He started waiting with patience. His brothers slaughtered a goat after they had thrown Joseph into the well. They covered Joseph's shirt with blood because they wanted their father to believe that a wolf had eaten Joseph. They returned home in the evening as ten brothers with the blood-stained shirt in their hands. They went up to their father crying. When the prophet Jacob saw his sons in this state, he realized something bad had happened. What's happened? Why are you crying? And where is Joseph? He asked. The ten of them replied together, We were racing and left Joseph in a corner to look after our things. When we returned, a wolf had killed him. The prophet Jacob didn't believe his sons and said, You're lying. They answered, We knew you would say that, Father. Here is Joseph's shirt. It's covered in blood. The prophet Jacob took the shirt in his hands and examined it. The shirt was stained with blood all right. However, there were no teeth marks on it. He asked himself, That's strange. It must have been a careful wolf. It's eaten my son, but it hasn't torn the shirt apart. It was obvious that his sons had done something bad to Joseph. He turned to them and said, Joseph wasn't killed by a wolf. You have done something bad to him and followed the way of Satan. Now all that is left for me is to be patient and wait for Allah's judgment. The brothers took a deep breath after their father's words. The prophet Jacob didn't believe them, but he had to accept what they had told him. He had no other choice. They had been successful in separating him from his son. The prophet Jacob was actually hopeful that Joseph was alive. From what he saw in his dream, Joseph had a bright future ahead of him. What upset him was to be apart from Joseph and not knowing where he was or what he was doing.